All right, Mr. and Mrs. Sullivan, here's a quick summary of what we've worked on through the first two lessons. We'll start with Mrs. Sullivan. Here is the after picture from lesson one. The before is right here. So here was Mrs. Sullivan's original setup. We spoke about widening the stance to get the ankles directly underneath the hips. We flared the front foot out just like you would if you were returning a forehand shot in tennis to step into the shot. And then we changed your grip a little bit. We turned the left hand just a hair stronger and we switched to an interlock with your pinky finger of your right hand and your index finger of your left hand. And then the only other thing we worked on in that first lesson was first placing the club down without the toe or heel too high in the air. We just wanted to put it in a nice neutral position. And then we would bring our grip onto the club, and then we would step in with our body. And this made it much easier to determine how far away you should stand from the golf ball. Okay, let's switch to one of the, this is the after video from left, lesson one. Stance is wider. We got maybe a hair too wide here, but that's okay. It's better to, better to overdo it a little bit in the beginning rather than underdo it. All right, so if we watch this swing here, first thing that we'll note that we ended up changing in lesson two is where the hands are located at a dress. Right here we can see the hands are... Oh, I apologize, it's the Pro Shop Radio. Uh, the hands are in line with the back of the ball. If I delete that line... We were looking to have the hands closer to your left thigh at address to put the hands and handle of the golf club in front of the ball because that's how the, the golf club is built to have loft on it and the shaft leaning forward. So let's walk, walk ourselves through the motion here real quick. And I'm just going to throw a little reference line on here. And while I'm doing this, I would like to note that we also changed the ball position a little bit. Let me get rid of this line, start back over. Um, as you can see in this video, this ball is played from just barely inside of your right heel. And with your shorter irons, we kind of moved it up to the middle of the stance. And then your hybrids and woods kind of just inside your left heel. And then we played your driver uh, off the middle of your left ankle or your left toes. So just throw in this line to, to be a reference for um, to the ball position, your head to the ball position. So let's go ahead and scroll through here. And you mentioned today, uh, during today's lesson, when you hit it thin, you thought maybe you were raising up. And so what we can see here is your head has moved a good foot behind the ball. And then you move back forward nicely raise up maybe a little bit but what we're finding is if we look at this throw an extra line in here if I drop this line down from your hands your hands are barely ahead of the golf ball at all at impact so this makes this makes catching the ball flush every single time a little bit challenging but let's watch the rest of the way through and here we see the real culprit for kind of the thin ones which is your left arm bending a good amount here through impact. Just throw a little line on here for illustration's sake. Nothing exact, but just gives us an idea to see how that left arm is bending. Okay, now we'll go ahead and go to today's swing towards the end of today's lesson. And I kind of dropped the ball a little bit here and I think I was talking and filming this one one handed at the same time and Inevitably, this happened to be our one of our best swings where I end up missing the ball. So I'll just throw that line right where the ball is. And we'll throw another line to represent where your head was. Uh, and again, I, we were, I was talking to you, and I also didn't start this, get this video started until the middle of your, middle of your back swing. But we, it ends up being pretty good, pretty good well-timed here. So we'll watch going down where this handle ends up relative to that golf ball. Much, much better here. 
I draw this line straight down from your hands. Your hands are about in the middle of your left thigh, a solid three or four inches ahead of the golf ball. If you get your hands in this position at impact the majority of the time, you're going to have a much easier time hitting the ball solid and hitting, hitting draws as well. So let's keep going through and let's see how the arms do on this swing. Oop, there's the radio again. Arms are looking excellent right here. Much straighter. You're turning through much better. And overall, we did some great work today. You did an excellent job. So a couple things to remember from this lesson. If you'll recall, if you look right here, we, we looked at this a couple times. That thumb back in there, that right thumb should be sitting flat on the golf shaft. And then your drill for working on this was basically just feeling like you're hitting these little pitch swings uh, about this length or maybe a little bit shorter. And your goal is to just have your hands and the grip of the golf club beat the club head to the golf ball. And you do an excellent job doing that here. And I'll just let this play through at full speed once real quick. Let me take these lines out. And we'll leave these two in. Very, very nice. Watch this one more time. Okay, let's take a look at how we were day one. Drastically better. Okay, now we'll take a look at Mr. Sullivan. We want to look at face on. So this was at the start of lesson one. Similar ball position issue, and we spoke about this, where the ball was kind of back here off the right heel, whereas with a with an iron, like this 8 iron, today we talked about basically wanting to have it right in front of your pant zipper, right on the left side of your face. So if I drop this line down right here, you'll see that this line ends up just left of the zipper of your pants and right on the left side of your face and so we'd play the ball more forward but on this first day we flare, we added a little bit of foot flare um, we moved the hands a little bit more forward at address and what we talked about what well, we started hitting by hitting shots mostly to the right and we hit some thin shots as well and the question was why you know what's producing those thin shots excuse me, and those shots to the right. And your original th uh, train of thought was that your head was moving, you were probably pulling up out of it. But then when we looked at the swing on camera, the first thing we saw is that your head probably moves back a solid eight or nine inches in the backswing, and it comes up maybe a little bit. However, if we watch the downswing... Your head is actually lower than it was at address, but now it's even further back, at least 10 inches back from where it was at address. And what we saw to be the real culprit of the thin shots was your left arm bending rapidly through impact. So unfortunately, the videos that I took that first day were corrupted, uh, so I couldn't get them on here. However, that is what we what we talked about and worked on, and, and one of the things we mentioned that we're going to keep working on as we move along is this left knee. We spent some time trying to trying to practice hitting the ground more consistently, and this left knee being dead straight, whoops, being dead straight well before impact was making it harder for you to hit the ground. So we worked on maybe bending that left knee a little bit, which helped with a couple other things and then keeping that left arm and both arms really straighter longer so now let's check out today's swing and in today's swing you'll see the feet are in a little bit better position we can probably flare the front foot a little bit more with the ball position it's is much further forward a lot better we could still probably move it about one to one and a half more balls further forward and 
let's look at this. I held your head in place for a number of swings to give you the feeling of what it was like to, to turn more centered. And what we discovered is when I, when I took my hand away and you had to do it on your own, you actually had to kind of feel like your head moved a little bit towards the target in the backswing to help keep it centered. But you stay much more centered in the backswing here. Don't raise up quite as much. Your head has only probably moved back about an inch, which is negligible. And then on the way down, it still comes back a hair, but we've reduced that gap from close to 10 inches to an inch, really only in a 30-minute session, which is excellent. You did a great job. And then what we'll see here is this left leg. We'll still end up working on bending that more. It's still pretty straight, but we tackled a big task today of getting that head forward, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't be discouraged about the fact that we have to work on the knee a little more or if we look at the left arm it's still bent kind of quick here but we're just taking one thing at a time and the work we did to, to keep your head a little more steady uh, was huge today so great work great work in that regards but just take note that you can see in this video that we will we're gonna keep working on these exact same things we're gonna work on bending this knee a little bit more we're gonna work on straightening those arms a little bit more while at the same time keeping that head nice and steady and centered. However, even with those couple pieces that are still out of place, we hit a bunch of shots in, in a row today that started straight. Maybe a couple of them were a little bit left, but they were all straight. You were hitting the ground far more consistently, which we can see the strike of the turf there. And they are almost every single ball drew. So we're off to a great start. And I believe that just about covers it. So when you're practicing until our next lesson, and I think we're going to do short game next week, the most important thing for you to practice in the interim is trying to keep that head more steady where you feel like it maybe moves a little bit towards the target in the backswing. And then keeping that left arm straighter. And just from keeping the head steadier, we can see the hands have finished a smidgen in front of the golf ball. If these arms, if these arms were even just a little bit more straight with that steady head, those hands would end up probably closer to your mid thigh up here. And that would allow you to have this left leg a little bit more bent. And then we would definitely hit the ground on every swing. And just about every ball would start just a hair right of the target and draw back. So again, a quick summary for what Mrs. Sullivan is working on. It is basically just small little pitch length swings. And all we're worried about is the hands, beating the, the hands and the handle of the golf club, beating the club head to and through the golf ball, keeping those arms nice and straight in the follow through. And then Mr. Sullivan close to the same lines. We want those hands to beat the club head to the golf ball. We're primarily concerned with keeping that head nice and steady and then slowly but surely working on keeping those arms straighter and having the handle of the golf club a little bit further forward at impact. All right, if you have any questions, you know where to reach me. Great work today, Mr. and Mrs. Sullivan.